Welcome to Biomimicry Academy, where you learn from nature and design for people and planet. So what is biomimicry about? What does it mean? Where does this term come from? Biomimicry is a word that is derived from two Greek words, bios, which is Greek for life, and mimesis, which means to imitate. That being said, biomimicry is not about copying something that we see in nature. A building that looks like a flower has nothing to do with biomimicry. Biomimicry is understanding the underlying design patterns, the design strategy, and the functions underlying certain outcomes, abstracting them to apply it to problem solving in the human world. For that, we want to give you some examples. But before we do that, let's frame why is biomimicry so powerful in shaping a world that works in a more responsible world. We do not only take nature as a model, as in copying or even abstracting something that we've seen as a success in nature and doing business as usual. What we do rather is we also use biological systems as a reference, as a measure for good design. So we have certain standards and certain design principles that are overarching and living systems that we apply. So what we really want to do is to transform our mindset and our attitude towards our planet and to, towards everything we do from a warehouse mentality where we think we own everything and we just take it out and use it as if it doesn't matter to a mentality where we consider everything we see and we see on our planet like a library. A library where of course we can go in, we can take things out, but we are very responsible and careful and bring them back because we do not own them, but it's a shared property. And we even apply this thinking not only to a single solution or a system that we create, but how it's embedded into the larger economy or even if you wish into the larger society. So when we look through a biomimicry lens on our society, we do not look at it through an economy centered perspective where we take economy as the most important and the central part of everything we do. And then we have some aspects of social responsibility and some aspects of ecological responsibility, but we have more a nested model. Of course, economy is the center of what we do, but it needs to be embedded into a society. So the social responsibility is a crucial part of how we do economy. And that again, because we are just one of millions of species, has to be embedded into the planetary boundaries. So we do have to care what is possible and what is viable on our planet. And that nicely integrates with the donut economics that Kate Rayworth actually published a few years ago, because that is exactly a framework how we can bring all these things together and how biological system design certain design principles that create viability and value integrate with revenue generation in a responsible economy. So let me give you an example of how biology and nature operates in a totally different term as we do it when we create business. One principle that nature uses over and over again is what we call multifunctionality. Maybe you have heard about the term form follows function. So things are designed to work in a certain way, not the other way around. And nature cannot afford to have millions of different materials for various solutions. So it rather focuses its strategies on a smaller subset of elements, of materials and of strategies. And this is something I want to exemplify in the next few slides. So what you see here is again an insect, a beetle. And this beetle again, as the bee that we showed earlier, is made up of the polymer, and this beetle again, like the bee we've shown earlier, is made up of the biopolymer chitin. But we do not only find chitin in the exoskeleton of insects, we also find a derivative of this polymer in the cell walls of mushrooms. It's in a totally different organism, it's a totally different function, and yet the material is the same. But we also find it as one component in the abalone shell. Now, the interesting thing about the abalone shell is that it is two times harder than the hardest ceramics we can produce. And this is made underwater at ambient temperature through self-organized mechanisms. And the way it works is something that is very interesting also for engineers because it brings two properties that are 
almost mutually exclusive together, which is extreme heart and stiffness with elasticity, and that allows for the dispersion of forces and thus makes this material very rigid. And chitin is that substance that serves as a gel-like material that basically disperses these forces within or between different brittle inorganic platelets. And the fourth and maybe most beautiful example of how chitin is used is what we call structural color. So structural colors we find amongst other organisms in butterflies. These butterflies as insects again are made up of chitin, the polymer chitin, but if you look at the wing structure of some of these butterflies you will not see pigments or other elements of color that add another material, but it's a structural feature made out of chitin. So if you look at it with a microscope, we'll see that the chitin takes the shape of little scales. And if we zoom in even more, we see these little Christmas tree-like structures. And these structures are responsible for a physical phenomenon called iridescence, which basically is a phenomenon where light, incoming light, is partially reflected and partially diffracted, and the interference, so the overlay of different wavelengths, then results in different colors. And depending on the thickness or the distance of the material, the color that we perceive is different. So in this case it's blue, but if the diff in this case it's blue, but if the distance or the thickness of the material is slightly different, then we may perceive it as red or green or other colors. And the interesting thing is that nature, as often, has not only evolved this mechanism in insects and chitin, but we find structural colors also in other materials. For instance, a mistake. but also we find this mechanism of structural colors in other organisms. We find it in keratin, the materials our hair is made out of, in birds. The peacock, for instance, these feathers, these beautiful feathers, are not colored by pigments, they're colored by structure. Interestingly, this is a strategy that has been used for innovation. Qualcomm, a company that develops displays for computers, for smart devices, has developed a display technology that they call Mirasol. Mirasol solves two problems by applying the strategy that the butterfly uses. When you go out with your handheld device into the sun, you will have a hard time seeing the colors because of the reflection of the light. The second problem we face with handheld devices is that a large part of the energy is drained by creating backlighting. So now using the incoming light, just as the butterfly does, and reflect it in a certain way that it creates color is something that solves these two problems. And that's exactly what Qualcomm did. Developing the Mirasol display based on the butterfly technology solves the problems of huge energy spending and the use of these strategies from the butterfly by Qualcomm in the Mersol display solves the two problems of reflection being outside and of using a lot of battery power for backlighting. If you want to know more about biomimicry, visit www.biomimicryacademy.com and become a biomimicry practitioner.